hello, hello, hello. I wanna see if this actually works and people can hear me. So, just giving everyone a chance to get on here. Hi, can you hear me? And can you hear me clearly? Because Facebook Live seems to be the only one where people just can't seem to hear me or hear me clearly. So awesome. Maybe it got fixed. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Can you that's awesome. Oh, I'm so happy now that people can hear me on the phone. It's so much easier than the computer, you know. When you do so much spiritual work, computers be possessed. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for coming in. Enjoy seeing you here with us. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, my God. It's so good to be here with y'all. Let me see. I'm glad that you guys can hear me now and Facebook seems to be like, hi Crystal, hi darling, hello everyone. So, hi Angelique, Mambo Sandy, hi Goddess Mother. So now that my phone seems to want to like let me be heard on Facebook Live, you know, I can do more of these because the computer be possessed is, I don't know if I can say that on here, but it's well, because, you know, the computer be like, nah, bitch, I'm not waking up today. So, but since Tony says I can be here, heard nice and clearly, I'm excited. So, today what I want to talk about is this phenomena of twin flames soulmates and love and right right now spirituality is very much a trend it's trending right and so everybody is getting into the trend falling into the trend you know and all of a sudden everybody is like claiming to know so much things about being spiritual and a big topic right now is twin flames and it's become a really popular thing is twin flame this, twin flame that, you know, my daddy was a twin flame, my mammy was a twin flame, everybody twin flame, twin flame, okay? And there's a saying from Jesus that says, when the blind lead the blind, both fall into the pit. And this is very much the case, especially now in spirituality. Everyone is out here being blind, leading the blind, right? And everyone's falling into the pit, and then people are like, why am I falling into the pit? Oh my God, it's so horrible, right? Here's the thing. A lot of modern day spiritual, spiritual people are just mixing up a whole bunch of different mythologies, a whole bunch of different practices from many different backgrounds, a whole bunch of different beliefs. And you can never reach clarity holding on to and mixing up confusion, right? I can't go ahead and make a delicious cake throwing in, you know, anchovies and sausages and eggs and then you know cake batter and cake mix and you know salt and then vinegar and like just throwing anything and everything i want and right now what's very popular is that if it doesn't feel good or it doesn't feel right okay that i'm not going to accept the truth right Truth doesn't feel good. And, you know, when you've spent life being false, right, the truth doesn't resonate with you, okay? When you have so much falseness, right, you can't resonate with truth, right? And the language of the truth, meaning the language of those who speak truth, right, 
is very different than the language of the false, right? And the language of the false, if you're a person who's false, you're going to be able to resonate with it, right? It's, they're going to be speaking your language. This is why a lot of people didn't resonate with Jesus' message, right? Because they were living in the falseness. And a lot of people didn't resonate with Buddha's message because they were living in falseness. And when you're 99% false and 1% true, then 99% of what comes out of the mouth of a true speaker is not going to resonate with you. But you're going to resonate really easily with people who speak falseness, right? And that's going to sound true because it's going to be pleasing to yourself. It's going to be pleasing to your own ears, right? And people like to see that which is pleasing, that which gives them comfort and gives them self-assurance that they know what they're doing, right? And they go seeking the comforts of the ego. And here's one of those big falseness, right, that's coming out is twin flames, right? And he's my twin flame, she's my twin flame, but she ran away, okay? Sweetie, if it's your twin flame, it wouldn't run away, okay? And I see people waiting months, years, weeks, whatever, for their twin flame to get it right, right? The whole concept of the twin flame if you actually delved into it deep enough, comes from Greek mythology. And it would say that basically two people fit together exactly right, like puzzle pieces, right? They click exactly right. The truth is, in Bodu, where we have the truth, okay, there is no speak of twin flames. In fact, what we teach you is like, if it don't work out with that one, go get yourself the next one, baby. Okay, and if you're, somebody says here that they're two parts of the same soul, that's the idea, right? If your soul is split in two, baby, you ain't got one. You ain't got one. Because you only got a half of one, right? And if you're willing to sell your soul, then your soul, we ain't willing to buy it because it doesn't have a lot of value, right? And... A lot of people want to use this twin flame excuse as an excuse to stay incomplete and unwhole. You can only give love, really, when you don't need that person. You can't love someone that you need in order to make you feel complete, right? You, you can give love to someone who you don't need, right? You can give love to someone, yeah, you can give love to someone who you do not need. If you do not need that mofo and you still love that mofo, then you really love them. But if you feel like crap without them, then you probably don't love them. They're probably there, okay, so that you can feel some insecurity and some lack of wholeness on yourself. Hola, hola, right? And when you need someone, it's just impossible to love them, right? Mothers really love their children, and they love it full from the heart, but they don't need their children. They love them because they have enough to give to them. Eventually, maybe they may need their children, but they don't need them in the sense to fill in some insecurity, right? So is, you know, someone mentions here, and this is what I've been having a lot too, you know, so-and-so is my twin flame, but they ran away. Baby, it's not your twin flame then. If they ran away, okay, then they're saying, hell no, we won't go. They say, no, okay? And you don't got to sit there and wait for that person to get it together. They might never get it together. That's the truth. There's 
thousands of people in the world, millions of people in the world, and they keep on reincarnating over and over and over and over again because they don't can't get it right. Okay? They can't get it together. There's lots of people who just never get it together. And they will never get it together. And a lot of times, people who are very coddled, you know, who have everything provided to them, never get it together. Right? They will continue to live off of the other, to victimize other people, to put their responsibilities on other people. Right? A lot of people that are spiritual, truly spiritual, often end up single. It happens because of a number of reasons. But one of those reasons is that if they've really developed themselves really completely and wholly, they become whole. And if they become whole, they don't need anyone else. Having someone else there is a plus. It's like, yeah, boo, that's nice. But if you're not there, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. If you're not there, I'm going to keep it pushing, right? Life keeps on moving, baby. It's not out of a need, right? It's out of a want. And there's a very big difference between wanting someone and needing someone. If you need someone, it's because you're not enough. And if you're not enough for yourself, how can you be enough for anybody else? Right? And if you are enough for yourself, and you're like, damn, boo, I'm enough. Fuck, what? Damn, I'm good. Right? Then anybody else who comes into your circle, they're like, damn, like, I want some of that. Right? And I've had a lot of, right? I'm not afraid to eat alone either, right? So I've had a lot of people right, that have gotten upset with me over the years because they girls want me, they mans want me, whatever. Shit, I want me. It makes total sense, right? Because, but the truth is, they need that person. I could take them or leave them, right? Don't be mad at your girl or your dude when they see something good. Right? I don't want neither of them. I don't need you. I don't need them. You need them. And something that a lot of people understand or come to understand, a lot of spiritual people especially, when I mean spiritual people in this context, I mean people who are actually doing the real spiritual work. Right? Not people who are trending or fatting on the spiritual work, being like sheep, following other people. All right? I mean, people doing the truly deep spiritual work, what they find, and my grandmother used to say, wisdom comes with age, right? And what a lot of people find as they grow older and therefore wiser, okay, is that they don't need nobody. They don't need nobody to therefore become whole. If you can't be whole on your own, can nobody make you whole? If you need somebody to fill that gap, then you're incomplete. And more than likely, anyone who you define as your twin flame, baby, is going to eventually run away too. Because they're going to feel that constant parasitic, right, vampire-like, sucking the life out of them energy that comes when you need someone. And they're going to get tired. And they're going to get tired of you. And so they're going to run away. My, uh, what I'm speaking here probably isn't going to be popular. But the first mistake was that you thought I gave a fuck about being popular. Um, I came here for something a little bit more than that, right? A lot of people don't want to face reality, okay? The reality is 
that you can't mix a whole and mox, as somebody I know says. You can't be mixing and moxing all kinds of spiritualities and spiritual things and end up reaching truth. Yes, there are many ways to achieve the truth, but each system has its science, right? And when you go deeply enough into truth within your system, you're going to be able to see truth everywhere else. And you're going to see what makes it true. But when you're just scratching the surface in every which way, okay, then you're going to simply accept that which makes you feel better. Let me tell you about something about truth and facts. Facts don't give a fuck about your feelings. Sure don't. Truth is not worried about how you feel. You can feel any old type of way. Okay? And many people seek to be masters of other people and can't even be masters of themselves. Okay? You can't disrespect me. It's impossible. You can call me all kinds of hoes and this and this and that, but you can't disrespect me. You can disrespect yourself, but you can't disrespect me. You can't make me angry. You can't make me frustrated. You can't make me upset. When you think you're making me upset, I'm sitting there laughing. It's impossible. It's impossible to disrespect me because I'm the master of myself. I own myself, right? So when people, you know, I got recently on TikTok, if you want to follow me there, at Papa Hector Salva, because somebody already took Hector Salva, my, my legal name, you know, and I'd be slow on it, right? And I just got on Clubhouse, but I don't know how that shit works. Mambo Sandy's going to have to give me a training and shit because she's my techie. She knows all that shit, all right? But a lot of people, you know, they have nothing to contribute, and so they go around and criticize. And when you have nothing of value to contribute, all you can do is criticize, right? All you can do is try to criticize. And so, you know, some people make little comments you know, no baby, you mad, I'm not mad, all right? And the fact that I can make you mad means I'm your master. Sit down, son. Sit down in your chair. When you finish having your temper tantrum, you can sit down, all right? I give you permission. I give you permission to calm your ass down, right? So if you, can't, if you have no self-discipline and no self-control, Right? How do you think that you're going to control spirits? Spirits of the higher order, things that you can't touch. Right? Yeah, they will. They'll try to come for your neck. They will try to come for your neck about truth. Truth upsets a lot of people. When you speak facts, when you speak the truth, a lot of people is going to get upset. Why? because people love the illusion. And they love the illusion, you know, they want the, to be a millionaire, it's like Beyonce, but they don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. They want to be laying in their beds all day, right? They want the freedom of the lion, but they want the comfort of the sheep. And when you know truth, you know you can't have it both ways. Right? You're either going to give up your freedom and have someone feed you, or you're going to be free, and at times you might go hungry a little bit, but you're absolutely free, and you can go and catch your shit. Okay? You can go and catch your own food. Right? You can go ahead and do what you want to do, and you don't have nobody telling you anything. And... The sheep, right, I made a little video about that the other day. The sheep, they're going to mock you, but they're going to mock you from the cage. 
They're sitting in a cage trying to mock he who is free. Okay? And when the sheep gets fat enough, the rest of us lions eat you. All right? We eat you for lunch. Okay? And, you know, you'd be like a snack. It'd be like, oh. But then we forget you. Just like the rest of the world is going to forget you. Okay? The truth is that it's deep, right? Truth hurts, like the damn song says, right? And power and strength don't come to people who are sitting there waiting for people to give it to them. Power and strength comes to the king who takes it, okay? People, only a fool, only a fool thinks that you know, the world at some point is going to be equal. It's never going to be equal because we all don't put the same amount of work in. Okay? The world is not meant to be equal. Okay? Everybody wants equality. It's not going to happen, baby. Why? Because we're not all doing the same things. We're all not putting the same effort and we're not all taking the same risks. Some of us are willing to risk it all to be free. Others want to risk a little bit, and so that's what they get in return, a little bit. Right? A lot of people are like, well, why are the millionaires hoarding money? Bitch, because they made that money. Because they worked for that money. And maybe because your dumbass bought whatever the fuck they were selling. Alright? Everybody mad. I saw something about I think it was Khloe Kardashian, and she wanted to become like a billionaire or some shit like that. And so she did like something, a GoFundMe basically, right? And people, broke ass people, people who ain't got no damn money, who ain't millionaires damn self, was giving her money so that she can reach and become a billionaire right? And then you're going to be mad when she got money and she done forgotten about your ass. Right? So the reason why millionaires is millionaires is probably because he bought the damn product. And for that, you're willing to give up. Right? You're willing to give up yourself. You're willing to give up your money for something that doesn't really bring anything back to you. But when it comes to your time, your effort, your devotion, and your commitment to something which brings back to you, you're like, oh, I don't know, I, I, I'll think about it. Maybe tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow. You're assuming an awful lot. Okay? That's called entitlement. Okay? When you think that God or life owes you some shit. God don't owe you shit. Life don't owe you anything, including love. Very few people that come here on this planet get to have love. The reason for it is very few people are willing to wear love's crown. And love's crown is a crown of thorns. Why do you think that they crown Jesus with the crown of thorns? It's symbolic. It may have actually happened. Okay? It may not have happened. That's not the point. The point is, hi, nice to catch you. And exactly, someone said here, they've been hustling since 5.30 a.m. Yeah, that's what, you know, bad, bad motherfuckers do. That's what we do. That's what lions do. We don't always sleep in. We don't always get to just, eh, you know, I don't feel like it today, okay? If you allow how you feel today or your emotions to run your life, then you do not control yourself. Your feelings control you, okay? And very few people ever get love because they're not willing to wear the crown. And the crown is a crown of thorns. 
That means just as much as love is going to take you to the highest height, love is going to take you to the deepest depth. Okay? The same way that love will crown you, so does it crucify you. Anyone who has had real love, maybe if just for a little bit, you've known that. You've known that love will crown you and love will crucify you. But a lot of people mistake possession and trying to own other people for love. If you have to own somebody, you don't love them. Okay? If you have to control them, you don't love them. If you love them, you love them as they are. The beautiful parts, the fucked up parts, even the fucked up parts don't look that fucked up to you because you love them. That's why love is blind. It's not because it can't see. It's because it doesn't give a fuck. There's a difference. It can see the bad parts. It sees the good parts too. It just doesn't care. Why? Because it's not there to take. It's there to give. Love is there just outpouring from one person to the other. It's not worried about what it's getting. Right? So, you know, like a lot of people are mentioning here, because we got a lot of hustlers on here with me, okay? Who say like, yeah, they don't get to sleep in. Yeah, that's why you're successful. That's why you are who you are. Okay? And like what someone else mentions here about what I just said, it, what Sandy mentions here, which is what I just said, is that most relationships are not relationships at all. They're possessionships. You want somebody to be like a little dog, a little character, okay? You want them to be what you want them to be. You don't love them, right? You want them to do what you want them to do. And when they do what you want them to, you love them. And when they don't do what you want them to do, you don't love them anymore. That's why people have become addicted to their pets. And I'm about to say something that's probably not that popular. Okay? But, hey, the truth is never popular. Okay? Is a lot of people consider leaving an animal outside abuse. I consider keeping an animal caged inside abuse. Animals were not made to be stuck indoors 24-7. Animals were not made to be put in purses, to be put in cages. If that was the case, they would have made their own cages. I consider it when you don't let, you know, a dog bark or run around and be itself, that's abuse. When you get upset that the dog barks, maybe he should be upset that you talk so damn much. This is why a lot of dogs right now have mental issues and anxiety, right? You got all these dogs on drugs. Why? Why? Because they're spending way too much time with humans. Way too much time in a caged environment, right? Like, no one is meant to live in a cage. You can't be happy living in a cage. If they put you in a prison cell, you're going to be upset. You ain't going to be happy. You ain't going to be happy unless you're free. Right? But people are like, you know, if you leave your dog outside, that's abuse. Well, what the fuck if there wasn't any humans, baby? Where do you think that motherfucker would be living? You think he's not smart? You think he ain't got no brain for himself? Given, yeah, giving dogs vegan dog food, CBD, Xanax, cutting dogs vocal cords, damn. Y'all, people, y'all savage, what the fuck? Right? Like, 
You gotta let these animals do their thing, right? And it's okay to have them inside if that's where they want to be, right? But you gotta give a being a freedom of choice, right? But a lot of people, they can't have love. They can't have love because they're not willing to make the sacrifice for it, so they substitute it with animals. Because an animal accepts you. Unfortunately, often to their own detriment. Right? An animal accepts the person. But the person can't accept the animal. Dogs weren't made to shit on toilets, baby. If he wants to do it, let him do it. But I ain't never seen a dog build a toilet. Right? And that's part of the reason why I'm like, between dogs and cats, I so much rather a cat. Because a cat is like, you know, I'm going to do me. And hell with you. And if you like it, you like it. Right? Cats are a little bit more savage, and I like that. I can appreciate that because they haven't gotten, you know, they get a lot of discrimination. There's a lot of people who absolutely love dogs, but they'll harm a cat in, no minute, in a minute, right? Cats, they got their priorities straight. A cat loves you if you feed it. The moment you stop feeding it, it don't need you no more. It's like, peace, I'm out. Ain't no loyalty, right? And I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that a cat's not false, right? A cat can be let outside, it's going to survive. It's going to come back, right? And it don't need you. It might like you, but it doesn't need you. And that's the same thing with twin flames and with soulmates, right? If you need a twin flame, you ain't got one, baby. If you need him, he ain't your twin flame. If you need that person to make you complete, then you're and you're an incomplete circle. You're just half a circle, right? You don't have no roundness to yourself. Then basically you have other things to worry about than looking for a soulmate. If you have a soulmate or a true twin flame, you love that person whether they're in a relationship with you or not, whether you can control them or not. Just like parents. Parents who have children, their kids don't always listen to them. They might not like what they're doing, but that doesn't stop them from loving their kids. I mean, if you're not a jacked up parent, right they might not agree with who their child marries but it doesn't stop them from loving their child a child is not here first of all you didn't even make it a child comes through you okay it does not belong to you there's a difference a child comes through you it does not belong to you you didn't make it god made that Right? So, it's the same thing with a true soulmate. Right? A true soulmate or a true love, true love comes through you. It doesn't belong to you. You don't own it. It comes through you. And when it comes through and when that flow is there, it comes out. And when the shit ain't there, it stops flowing. It's just like the damn water. When the shit shut off, the shit shut off. Hi, Marie. Right? It's not something that you own. Only a very egotistical mind, only a very egotistical person tries to own others. Okay? Only a very egotistical person is constantly owning what they do. I don't do shit. I do everything and I don't do anything. 
a lot of people have said, thank you, Papa Hector, you healed my child, you saved my child, you saved my business, you saved this, you saved that, no baby. All that came through me, but I didn't do it. There's a difference. God did it. The spirits did it. And when I say God and the spirits, I mean the same damn thing. Right? I don't own the credit for that. That's not my credit. The only credit you can give me is that I got out the damn way to let God and the spirits function through me. That's the only credit you can give me. And even that, that's not mine either. It's because God allowed me to move out the damn way. Right? So, a lot of people, you know, I appreciate it, you know, because not everybody can do what we do. Not everybody can do what I do and move out the damn way to allow God and the spirits to flow through that. In fact, few people can because the ego is stuck so much in the way. But at the end of the day, it ain't me, baby. It's them. And without them, there is nothing. With them, everything. Right? So... I just had to speak about this damn twin flame thing because I'm like, you know, get over yourself. If that man or that woman ran away from you, if they didn't want you no more, but they too punk to tell you that, or maybe, you know, they weren't there. It's not your twin flame. Okay? And even if it was your twin flame, let's pretend that it's real. Let's pretend like the rest of what you like to be, right? Even if it was real, you wouldn't try to own that. If they were like, yeah, it's time for the relationship to be over, you'd be like, yeah, you'd be on the same page as them because you'd be of one mind. But you gotta have your own mind first. You gotta own your own mind. Very few people own their own mind. Wanna follow around behind what every Jimmy and Joe is doing. You wanna go ahead and be follow Freddy and follow Frankie, okay? And then you wanna be acting like Dodo Debbie, you know? and that be Derek when it comes to your life, right? Dodo Bird Denise and that be Derek don't get nowhere. You got to own your own mind. You got to own your own self, which means you can't have every Tom, Dick, and Harry controlling every which way you feel. If I can make you angry, if I can make you upset, you know why? It's because uh, I'm your papa and you're my son, right? It's because you, you haven't mastered yourself. If anyone else can make you upset, they're your master. You're not your master. If anybody else can hurt your feelings, they're your master. Because can't nobody hurt my feelings. Can't nobody disrespect me. Can't nobody frustrate me. Can't nobody do shit. Okay, the different, exactly, right? And a lot of people have a lot of um, resistance towards spiritual masters because when you think of masters, all you can think about is controlling other people, right? But a master is not a master because he controls other people. He's a master because he has complete and total control over himself. And a master is not a teacher, just like what I told Jacqueline earlier this week. A master is not a teacher. A teacher teaches you information. A teacher wants you to learn. A master simply is a light, and our light shines upon you. And when that light shines upon you, you transform. We don't need to force. If you want to see, you can see. We're there. We shine that light. But if you want to keep your eyes closed and, you know, put them in your ears, that's fine too. It doesn't affect us one bit. There's a big difference between a master and a teacher. 
right? But the only way to become a master is to walk with a master. And there's a big resistance to that here in this culture because you lack the capacity to commit. You lack the capacity to even commit to being angry or upset. One minute you're upset at Johnny, right? Then five minutes later, oh, you want him back. He's the best love of your life. You can't even commit to yourself, right? So you have a, a difficulty in committing and being real, right? To be able to reach mastery, you have to have, be able to have commitment. And there's a big difference between commitment and attachment. That'll be left for another live at some other point in time. But as we always say, I hope that this has helped you. Share, share, share. Share if you care. Share if you dare. If you'd like to make a donation or a love offering, go ahead and cash app us. Cash symbol Hector Salva. Or, you know, send it to us via PayPal, help at mysticalwork.com. Right? I've been getting a lot of donations. A lot of people have been supporting the work. That's why you see me doing a lot of these damn lives. Right? Because I want you guys to learn and to know. And there's a lot of fake ass Freddies out here. Okay? And a lot of false, you know, false Frankies. Right? And we need, the only way that you can reach truth is by starting with truth. Because when the blind lead the blind, both fall into the pit. Right? So many blessings. I hope that all of you have an awesome weekend. And as always, keep the faith. And where should faith start? It should start in keeping the faith in you. God bless.